So uh, this calorimetry practice problem is asking what is the specific, uh, oh, sorry, it starts off by giving the specific heat capacity of lead and water. So the specific heat capacity of lead over the range of temperatures of a certain experiment is 0 0.115 joules per gram degree Kelvin, meaning that for every gram uh, of lead being raised one degree in temperature, we have to input 0.115 joules. 50 BB sized uh, balls of lead at a temperature of 95 degrees are dropped into 100 grams of water at 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, so uh, BB size means it's 0.177 of an inch in diameter. The density of lead is 11.32 grams per centimeter cubed. What is the final temperature of the mix of water and shock? So we invoke the first law of thermodynamics. It says that um, energy is neither created nor destroyed. It is merely redistributed in the universe. So the energy loss, the heat loss by the hot metal is going to go into the water. We're also assuming that the whole calorimeter the, where this experiment is taking place is completely insulated, so no heat escapes to the uh, surroundings. The metal will lose heat to the water, and the water will warm up until they reach the same temperature. We recall that in the kinetic molecular theory, it says that energy is only transferred when certain molecules have more kinetic energy than the molecules around them. If all the molecules have the same kinetic energy, they also have the same temperature. So the Q lost by the lead, the heat lost by the lead, is equal to heat gained by the water. We're going to, tra we're going to uh, substitute Q with mc delta t, which is the heat flux equation. And we're also going to replace the change in temperature with a t final minus t initial, because we don't know uh, the t final. That's the one unknown for this experiment. But we do, the two, we do know the two t initials. Uh, before we even start to solve this problem, though, we have to find out how much lead is in the experiment. So we're going to use the density formula. Density equals mass over volume. We're going to rearrange uh, to solve for the mass of lead. Here's the density of lead. Here is the volume of a sphere, and the little balls are all spheres. Uh, here is the diameter in inches. We're going to convert it to metric. Uh, so we're going to multiply inches by 2.54 centimeters per inch. That's going to cancel inches, and we get that the balls are 0.44 centimeters in diameter. Half of that is going to be the radius of the ball, which allows us to plug into this equation. 11.32 times 4 over 3 pi times 0.22 centimeters all cubed gives you that each ball weighs 0.53 grams worth of lead. There's 50 BBs, so we're going to multiply that number by 50, and we get that there's 26.9 grams of lead being added to the water. And the lead uh, is at a temperature of 95 degrees Celsius. Mc delta T is equal to Mc delta T. This is the lead, and this is the water. Here's the mass of lead. Here's the heat capacity of lead. And I've put 95 minus Tf. This is the initial temperature, and that's the final temperature. 100 grams of water. Uh, heat capacity of water, you'll notice that water has the highest heat capacity of any other substance known. And then the temperature final, which we don't know, we're trying to find, minus the, uh, the initial temperature. Then I multiply these two numbers to get this number. I distribute it into the bracket. So we get 294 and 3.09 TF is equal to 418 TF minus 10,450 by multiplying these two numbers. I then transpose the TF. Uh, this TF is transposed to that side. And the negative 10,450 is transposed to that side. So we get 10,700.4 and 421. Is 3 plus 4, 18 is 421, and then I put the rest in the decimal. I didn't even use my calculator for that. Uh, TF is equal to this number divided by this number. We are isolating for TF, and we get that the final temperature is 25.5 degrees Celsius, which is surprising because it's just barely putting a dent in the temperature of the water. But when you stop and think about how the heat capacity of water is some 36 times higher than the heat capacity of lead, and the fact that there's only 26 grams of lead, or roughly 27 grams of lead, versus 100 grams of water, then it stands to reason that you have 150 times as much, roughly, 150 times as much heat being uh, uh, heat capacity required to change the temperature of the water. The second version of this question is a little easier, because I use water in the in both, in both sections. So 
So we use the same equation. We have 50 mLs of water at 9 degrees, and it's mixed with 75 mLs of water at 15 degrees. What is the final temperature? So we say Q loss is equal to Q gained again. MC delta T is equal to MC delta T. Because we're using water in both sides of the equation, the heat capacity is the same on both sides. So I've just canceled the C, and it simplifies the, the calculation for us. So 50 grams of water times the initial temperature of the hot water minus the final temperature, which we don't know. 75 grams of water times the final temperature of the water of the cold water, which we don't know, but we do know its initial temperature. And we get 4,500 minus 50 TF is equal to 75 TF minus 11.5. We transpose the numbers together and we put all the, the variables together, solve for TF. We find that the temperature is at 27 degrees Celsius. When you do these types of problems, uh, your answer should always fall between the initial and the final temperature. If you get an answer that falls outside of that range, either you had a chemical reaction that was endothermic or exothermic, or you miscalculated. Okay? If there's no chemical reaction, your temperature must fall between these two numbers. Any questions? Sir, why aren't there any sign conventions for the last the problem? Uh, why are there no sign conventions? Oh, why, okay, so why didn't I, um, because um, I'm only interested in knowing the heat flux, which is the amount of energy that's flowing from the hotter object to the colder object. If I was to put the sign conventions to try to keep the, which one is exothermic and which one is endothermic, it would create a complication that I don't need to add on. As long as I know that the amount of energy coming from this side is being given to the other side, I don't have to worry about the sign convention. So I arrange these numbers so that I get a positive quantity. It just simplifies the calculation. It makes it a little bit easier. Anything else? Questions? Um, sir? Yeah? How did you get um, 10,744.21 equals 421.09? Uh, the 10,744 was obtained by, uh, well, first of all, we multiplied the uh, 3.09 by the uh, 95 and by the TF. So that's how we got 294. 3 times 95 is roughly 294. And the 3.09 times the TF. The 10,744 10, was obtained because I had 10,450 on this side, and I transposed it, adding it to the 294. So the total is 10,744. And I transposed this number to that side, so I grouped all my TFs together. And I'm just doing the algebra so that uh, you can find it. the variable on one side and the numbers on the other, and then you, you, saw, you isolate the variable, uh, the variable all by itself so you can find the final answer. Any more? Okay. So you see how the question says 50 mLs, right? But mm -hmm. in the answer, you use 50 grams. Why is that? Oh, because uh, I didn't say that uh, we know that the density of water is equal to 1 gram per centimeter cube, or very close to that at any rate. And, and so if you have density equals mass over volume, and you're trying to find for the mass of something, you, you uh, transpose the V, and when you plug in the numbers, density of one is going to give you the same number as whatever the volume that you used is. So the density of water is one gram per centimeter cube. I used 50 mLs in the first uh, example. So the, uh, and the mLs is interchangeable with centimeters cubed, incidentally. This is uh, something that stumps a few students. ML is the same as centimeter cubed, and sometimes you'll even see symbol CC on the side of a syringe, for example, which stands also for centimeter cubed. These are SI units, and, you, and they're acceptable. But sometimes you'll even see that being used. So you'll see that the centimeter cubes cancel, and you get an answer in grams. I just didn't bother to show that step, and I just put down that 50 mLs of water is the same as 50 grams of water. Okay.